After widespread condemnation and an online petition with tens of thousands of signatures, the suspension of pediatrician Dr. Tim DeMeyer has been withdrawn. Last month, he penned a sobering open letter detailing what he called the horrendous conditions of the Rahima Musa Hospital in Johannesburg, where he works. Dr. DeMaia spoke of power and water cuts, broken equipment and shoddy infrastructure to having to drive around to other hospitals trying to acquire essential supplies. He was placed on precautionary suspension yesterday, but after the provincial health department met with hospital management and Dr. DeMaia today, the move was rescinded and Dr. DeMaia is back at work. Let's get some reaction now. I'm joined by Dr. Aslam Dasu from the Progressive Health Forum. Thank you very much, Dr. Dasu, for joining us this evening. What's your reaction to the way that the Gauteng Health Department has handled this whole situation? Well, first let me say good, good evening and, and let me first say that it's with great relief that we've heard of the reinstatement of Dr. DeMaia, um, you know, who in sheer exasperation penned the letter he did that you mentioned, but who has been subjected to the most unwarranted suspension in our view, and we've made that widely known. I think the actions of the Gauteng Department of Health um, were egregious and, and uh, you know, deserve condemnation. Uh, that they have now reinstated him is entirely the result of the outrage that people have felt, certainly in the healthcare community and, and more broadly. Um, and I think the rather clear-headed approach of the Premier, who we believe was uh, furious that this has actually happened. And I think that, you know, all in all, we're, we're, we're happy that he's back at work because he's a pediatric gastroenterologist, one of less than 10 of these specialists in the country, uh, whose patients are entirely dependent on him. So overall, we're glad that we have reached this point. Dr. Dasu, the department's attempt to muzzle criticism speaks volumes about their lack of accountability. That still leaves the hospital's patients without the level of care that they deserve. So what now? Because although Dr. Demai is now back at work and he's able to continue caring for his patients, uh, those problems that he spoke of so um, openly and with so much feeling in that open letter, uh, they still persist. Yes, certainly they do. And in fact, that's what we are most concerned about right now. Look, this was an act of rancor, of petulance by petty officials who were stung by his revelations. And if you have a system of governance that allows for that, then that's a, a, you know, a, a matter of grave concern, not just to health workers and their patients, but to the population at large which looks at the government as a agency that is looking out for their interests. This behavior says that it's anything but. And, you know, it's not enough that the suspension has been rescinded. What must now be publicly revealed is who was involved in this decision uh, and in the decision outlined in the letter of suspension, which was entirely related to his speaking out without permission. It was signed by the CEO, who we understand is part of a broader administration. So there needs to be a thoroughgoing uh, um, inquiry into this by the department. And whoever has been involved in it has to go through the proper disciplinary processes. Because not only was this unwarranted, but it put patients' lives at risk. And it was to the credit of even the University of the Vatersrand, ourselves, and various other organizations who spoke out very strongly that they had to backtrack um, and that the MEC uh, had to go and, and reinstate him. Of course, they made a show of it by going there and having a big to-do. Uh, but there was only one, one position, and that was to, to reinstate him. So apart from further action against those officials responsible for the suspension, how do we look at addressing the conditions? Because that's been ongoing. Uh, it's, it's, it's historic. Uh, and there doesn't seem yes. to be progress in that respect. So in your engagements with the department, are you seeing the kind of uh, level of commitment needed to address those issues uh, concisely? Definitely not. 
and we have had engagements with them, and you're quite correct. This is one of a, a series of continual disasters that this Gauteng Department of Health inflicts on this province. It's a blight on the healthcare. This department's a blight on the healthcare of the people of Gauteng and on healthcare workers who, by sheer force of will and their own blood, sweat, and tears, keep the system going in the interest of providing care to their patients. They deserve far better than a serially failing bureaucracy under very dodgy governance. So a couple of things do need to happen. There is a comment in, in, in the statement upon his reinstatement that they will take a look at these issues that he raised. But these are deep systemic issues that even if you can fix the problem at Rahima Musa, what Dr. DeMaia's letter does is channels the frustrations and the exasperation of thousands of health workers working in hundreds of facilities. So this is a systemic problem. Make no mistake, it's not going to go away easily. And the second thing that it, it does, and perhaps it's a more proximate uh, objective, is to stop this, this really uh, regressive administrative regime that, that operates through fear and victimization of health workers. Should they speak up on matters that engage their ethical remits, and which they're obliged to speak about. And so I think, you know, I, this has been a, a singular lesson. And it, if it goes unlearned, then, then this Gauteng Department of Health does not deserve the support of the people of Gauteng. And that must be made clear to them by the people of Gauteng. Look, we have a, we, we've just, it's still in the grip of a pandemic. We've come through a terrible two years. Our health workers went well beyond the call of duty, putting their lives on the line. Many lost their lives by doing the work that, that needed to be done. But when you have an administration that doesn't pull its weight, that is not interested in, in fixing systems, that can't even provide water to a hospital for weeks, and which takes a charitable organization two days to drill a borehole and provide the water, then you are dealing with a level of dysfunction that is horrific. And the impact is felt by patients. And, you know, it's for everyone. We should all be concerned about this. So that Dr. DeMaia is back in his job is, is a relief and it's welcome. But it now brings up the bigger issue, the bigger elephant in the room about how the system is run and it is not run well, if 95% of all health facilities cannot be accredited for this proposed NHI, then you understand the scale of this problem. Yeah. It's been 20 years in the making, and this is what we now see. Well, thank you very much for your time and for speaking to us. That was Dr. Aslam Dasu from the Progressive Health Forum uh, commenting on the reinstatement of Dr. Tim DeMeyer uh, at Rahima Musa Mother and Child Hospital amidst the con continuation of those issues that plague the hospital.